uh, is for demystifying AI. And before I assumed that someone be mystified today. However, after you stopping a bit, I was hearing things like random forests and idle users, so maybe, I don't know, maybe you're too much clued in for this talk. Um, however, I thought it would be fun to, um, uh, given that uh, artificial intelligence now, there's a lot of hype as we discussed, um, and uh, there's a lot of uh, misconceptions about it. Um, I thought it would be fun to address this under the lens of uh, our own experience as a company that has worked in, in this area. Uh, so, let's start very lightly. So, misconception number one, the canonical application to showcase your AI is. So what's the quintessential, these days, the quintessential application, demo application to showcase your uh, state-of-the-art AI? Image recognition, image labeling, uh, sentiment analysis, perhaps? Wrong. It's actually online pizza ordering. Apparently, uh, building, uh, ordering, and delivering pizza is the canonical application of a demo AI. Uh, when I was at university, I was taught uh, 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 genetic algorithms through the medium of pizza. Um, and uh, um, most of you may be aware of chatbots. Uh, the application of most chatbot engines so would be uh, an app for ordering pizza. And you probably know by now that the first um, application for autonomous drones is actually delivering pizza in somewhere in Australia. There you go, that's one misconception. So let's be a bit more serious now. Misconception number two, we need AI somewhere now. So uh, part and parcels of being a consultancy like Brian Monday, I mean, it's helping clients trying to figure out the best solution for their problem. And we think of best in terms of uh, uh, appropriateness of the solution, uh, the performance of the solution, the cost effectiveness of the solution, and ultimately the happiness of our client. However, Many times you seem to be at odds what, what the clients, they think it's best for them. Um, and um, they will, uh, 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 they have this perception uh, that they will come to us with the, uh, uh, a grand plan of restructuring this business and usually a huge diagram with a big cloud in the middle says AI and all the R is pointing into it. Uh, so they have this uh, perception that AI is this uh, magical component that will solve their tasks. Uh, whereas uh, sometimes the, nobody in the company can actually tell you what, what one of the tasks they're trying to solve. Uh, you can even describe it, let alone solve it. Like one example was once we had, they wanted us to reconcile two data sources to, and realize there was uh, the same, they referred to the same entity. But without, there's no way, there was no properties in the two data sets that could link them together. So if you cannot produce an example for the AI to learn this task, you can't produce a, an AI. Um, so in the uh, early 2000s, the uh, directors were reminded we were working in this company called CodeFront. We were developing this AI framework, uh, framework about optimizing using genetic algorithms. <coughs> And uh, at the beginning, we were really sitting on a technology, uh, you know, wanting some application. But things really took off for Codefront once we realized that our product could be used to optimize financial portfolios with these very exotic instruments. Now, you can see right there a, a few things. One, this particular problem is very specific, very easy to, uh, to describe. It's also uh, very obvious to find a way to measure the key performance indices, i.e. the performance of your portfolio tells you how good your is doing. Also, it's very easy for the domain experts to uh, uh, generate examples of uh, successful results. Um, and also, you can see that uh, given the complexity of the task, the number of variables that are involved, it's obviously advantageous to use uh, a, 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 an AI uh, to help you. So to summarize, current AI shines on narrow, well-defined tasks. I have to point out that I'm strictly um, referring to the current state of AI. I'm nothing about what's happening in the future, just what it is now. 
Cartesian is a very narrow, well-defined task. And I think uh, Pip here also uh, pointed that out. Um, the AI's business value should be measurable. So if you get into this, if you think you need AI, you need to make, you know, you need to know exactly how you can measure uh, the benefit and value of the AI is giving you. And uh, it should be clear where the approach <coughs> of using AI lies uh, over more traditional and current business solutions. Misconception number three will all be replaced by AI. This is actually true, so moving on. <laughs> okay. So, um, when we still working our code form, this is how we will clean Chassel. John, right there, one of the director, he would go and demand to uh, talk to a manager, he's one of the trading floors of some uh, investment bank, and he would offer a challenge and say, your best traders against Galapagos, which was the name of our product. Both the move, but would work because uh, uh, Galapagos will invariably, the, the, uh, Galapagos uh, um, uh, output will invariably outperform the human structures um, by several basis points. So what do we just do? Do we just destroy the human structures uh, uh, career? Not really. Actually, the human structure now will learn how to use Galapagos, will become faster, better, and perform a lot better for his company or her company. Um, but also, what else would happen? It would happen that once the sale got through, what firm would have to hire someone like me to go to the bank and integrate the product into their infrastructure? So we had one job, which turned into one AI, one improved service given by the uh, provider of the original job, and uh, at least one more and one. Um, go forward to 2014. IBM decides to start marketing Watson, the AI that a few years earlier won the Jeopardy contest. And so they launch this, what would you do with Watson competition? A brand Monday we decide, we apply with our idea about an AI personal trainer and nutritionist. So we become finalists uh, on the basis of a uh, prototype app and a video of the director talking about the potentials of Watson. And if you watch this video, you think that the directors were the AI. So uh, eventually, we, they fly us to Orlando. We win runners of prize, which comes with a nice contract to use Watson but with our app. And so the idea there was never to replace the personal trainers, but to make them a lot better. At that time, Watson was a question and answer engine which means you feed Watson with a lot of uh, corpus of material, knowledge, documents, books, and uh, then you simply would be uh, questions in English and it output would be snippets from the corpus that you think would be more relevant to the question. And so our idea was to make personal trainers better by giving them access to this uh, great uh, knowledge, corpus of knowledge, uh, their fingertips very fast just by asking questions. But something else that happened as well, uh, what do you think the hardest part of working with Watson was? Anybody can venture? No? It was actually training Watson. So this means um, we would have to go and uh, scavenge for a substantial amount of documents and corpus uh, to feed Watson wins, that, to make it worthwhile for the personal trainers to uh, use the app. And also, we would have to uh, supply Watson with thousands and thousands of answer, a question and answer pair to train it with. Uh, we would have to have multiple questions for the same answer. We would have to make sure that the language was exactly like or as close as possible to the target audience between personal trainers. And we found the best person to help us with this was a teacher. So we promptly hired her, and she became, uh, as far as I know, the first cognitive computing knowledge corpus manager ever. <laughs> and so, again, uh, we started with one job, we ended up with one AI, one improved service uh, from the uh, personal trainers, the, the job providers, and uh, uh, a new employment. So, um, to uh, summarize, AI is a tool to enhance the experts and not a replacement for experts. Um, typically, typical AI 
applications, we require new classes of jobs. We create job titles and all that. And you can reskill or repurpose. Uh, and uh, um, world of opportunities opens up because you can imagine once uh, platforms like Watson are ubiquitous uh, and they need loads of data to be fed to them. And you can find loads of opportunities for new types of businesses and new types of revenue for publishers. Next, misconception number four, AI will bring the apocalypse. Uh, so that this conception that this idea that uh, if you leave the uh, AI in check, this will eventually um, run evil. So, uh, anybody remembers the financial crash of 2008? <laughs> yeah, yes. Uh, anybody remembers what was one of the uh, financial instruments that uh, provoked <laughs> of 2008? Lehman. Lehman Brothers? Uh, the financial instrument. Uh, the, Credit oh, the, CD the CDOs. Yeah. CDOs, exactly. Which stand for? Derivatives, uh, yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, I know. Like, uh, yeah. Collateralized debt yeah. obligations. Now, those of you who are paying attention may have realized that I um, distinctly tried to avoid to mention the name of the uh, exotic instruments that we were optimizing in the laboratories. <laughs> Do you want to know what were the exotic financial instruments that we were optimizing in the laboratories? Or CDS? Yes. Right. So we are uh, our uh, inside job we pride ourselves <laughs> on the fact that we brought the economy on its knees with our development AI. Because at that time most of the uh, um, investment bank in London would be running the laboratories on the dashboard. However, was it really the AI's <coughs> fault? Nobody came to Brighton trying to arrest the of us. Uh, so I, I don't think so. Uh, probably it must have been greed and a whole combination of all the different things. Um, so, but there's a, an interesting and a little bit of a disturbing trend right now. When you see in the press titles like uh, Amazon scraps their secret AI that will be at the uh, um, hiring platform because it's discriminatory against women. And this is actually something that in, the, uh, in academia they're noticing. Whenever there's, uh, there are predictive, predicting tasks that have to do with minorities or race or gender, it turns out that the model that comes out is extremely biased. And uh, the press is crying wolf they are blaming AI, they're coming up with schemes like uh, uh, auditable AI or accountable AI, where well, they think of AI as this uh, independent entity that needs to expose itself. Um, uh, however, before we go on to that road, let's just uh, remind ourselves that the <coughs> current predictive models like uh, uh, deep learning, neural networks, uh, what they really do, they try to learn a um, conditional probability. Uh, that means their output is the probability that something happens given an input. So let's just, for intuition, let's have a look at the examples. It won't be as cool as it is, but. <coughs> now, this is our hiring platform task. We are given a sample of 10 engineers. And we're looking at two properties. We're looking at the engineer is male, the engineer is very good, uh, his or her job. So we can see the probability <coughs> of being a great engineer, so a one is a great engineer, is three over 10, right? The probability of being a male engineer is six over 10, okay? So if we look at the conditional probability of being a good engineer, uh, given that you're male, this happens. If you remember your probabilities, the uh, um, conditional probability will be the probability that we have <coughs> two properties at the same time, so three, divided by the probability of being a male engineer. And you see that the result is one half. That is, we increase the probability of being an engineer by just, just by introducing these conditional parameters. Now, there was no AI here, there's no algorithm here, so what, what was the cause of this bias? What could be the cause of this? The, 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 the 
Yes, yeah, exactly. The sample we were given is exactly it. This sample, given this sample, this will be concluding, this will what that neural network will be concluding as well. Great, thanks. And so, to recap, it may be it's ingenious to denounce current algorithms if they were entities with their intentionality, and always be mindful of the bias in the data. So the bias may be in the data. Forget about the AI at this moment. It's not sentient. So always be mindful of where the data comes from, where it's biased, and also who uses it. Misconception number five, AI can't be created. Now, if you work <coughs> on Monday, you know that on Fridays we stop at lunchtime and then become Sprite Minded Labs, where we indulge in uh, our own experiments, uh, with, uh, looking at new tech, uh, new ideas. Uh, we decided to experiment with something called uh, um, uh, generative adversarial networks. We had just moved off this, so we thought, okay, uh, since we, have, we want to learn this, let's apply this to create uh, decorative art for our new office. And the way we did this, we, we did it by trying to reproduce the original paper where these guns were introduced. The original paper was trying to generate bedrooms. Now, um, I say creativity is in the eye of the older, you be the judge of this. So this is after a few iterations of these algorithms. If I didn't tell you this were meant to be bedroom, this would look like, I mean, they're a bit pixelated, but they look like Dali's drawings. Some of them are fantastic. This is stuff that doesn't exist. This is just a neural network trying to figure out the probability distribution of what makes a bedroom. I thought that was fantastic, so you'd be the judge of that. <laughs> this is a bonus misconception. AI solutions require a research team and an FP bank account, and I think he was very, uh, very good on that point. Uh, you don't anymore for some tasks. You have transfer learning now that you can take advantage of models from somewhere else. Uh, you have libraries and uh, utilities that Google gives you and libraries. So um, for certain tasks, you can certainly start from scratch one person. That's, that's a misconception. Um, so, to um, conclude, here I'm bastardizing a quote from uh, Ace, Arthur C. Clarke, uh, the science fiction writer. Well, there is, I think there's the perception out there that any sufficiently advanced AI is indistinguishable from everything. And I can see why that happens. Some of these models and these ideas, uh, their details uh, are very complex and sophisticated. It's really hard to explain to the general public what's really happening. So all you can do is use analogies. And you know, as well as I do that, analogies are great for insight, but they also, they can be deceiving. And so I would suggest to change the previous uh, idea with this mantra, any sufficiently current AI definitely is not magic. So always keep that in mind. So every time you read articles about AI, for those of you who are mystified, <coughs> always put your analogies out on, so be mindful of that. Uh, put your protective gear. Uh, thank you very much.